Mindy Project, Mindy Kaling played a doctor, yeah? If you were in a sitcom, Reg, and you had to choose a profession for your character, what would it be? Uh, aeronautical engineer. Aeronautical engineer. <laughs> always relatable, always relatable. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? What about you, Carlton? What would you be? I, I think we both know I'd own a deli. <laughs> <laughs> be there every day. It's, it's weird that I do this instead of owning a deli. Yeah. You know, you know what I'd be? Painter and decorator. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you've got endless storylines. You know what I mean? That's what you need. That's what you need the job to have. Yeah. Interactions with other people. Painter and decorator. You're in other people's houses. Yeah, you've got... Yeah, there's, there's hilarity for days. Yeah. <laughs> Sim similar to aeronautical engineering. It's, it's almost <laughs> identical. Yeah. There was a sitcom, which will mean nothing to you, called Brush Strokes. Oh. Ben, do you remember Brush Strokes? I do remember Brush Strokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant show. And it's lost on America, this. That's, That's what it's like for me sometimes here. <laughs> what you're experiencing now is how I feel, I would argue, twice a day. <laughs> well, someone will mention something that I haven't seen, I've no knowledge of it, and the response will be, what? How have you not heard of that? And I'm like, I can't stress this enough. I moved here six years ago. Right. If I'm like, you don't remember when Donkey Lips and Budnick had a banana eating contest on Salute Your Shorts? <laughs> That's it. That, that is it. And so me going, what? You can't remember when Del Boy fell through the bar? <laughs> Does anyone here remember Del Boy falling through the bar? See, and that is a crime. That's a crime, because that is arguably one of the greatest moments in British sitcom history. When Del Boy fell through the bar and he said, play it, call Trigger, and he fell through the bar. I'm tempted to play it. Stand by, we have it. You what? Here you go. OK. <laughs> I think we're on a winner here, Trig. All right? Play it nice and cool, son. Nice and cool, you know what I mean? <laughs> The best fall in, in sitcom history. For the people watching at home, they're gonna think it was TV magic and we just happened to have that clip, but no, it was like you mentioned it and then Ben had it like five seconds later. Or Ben told someone to get it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't even press his own keyboard now. <laughs> he doesn't, he sits up there, someone feeding him grapes. <laughs> someone, someone fanning him down with either an Emmy Award or, a, or an article about the Adele special and how well it did. <laughs> I look at him, I think, I used to know him. <laughs> when he was a wee boy. I was there when he was born, Ben, did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> I was. It's not even a joke, it's pure coincidence. We didn't even find that out until later in life. But he... I was there when he was born. <laughs> he was born in the back of a cab. Mm. Baby Ben crying in that car gave you the idea for carpool karaoke. That was exactly right. And what's amazing is I was only five at the time. <laughs> Isn't that true, Ben? Every word. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite bit of doing the monologue at the moment since we've had an audience back is when we fall into bits like this and I could just catch the eyes because you can't see the bottom half of the face. Just catch the eyes of one audience member who thinks to themselves, is this on television? <laughs> yeah, look, look. Those, look, look. The two in the, you two in the top corner, you literally just said that, right? Is that what you honestly just said? <laughs> yeah, we're like, how does this work? Like, is this, is this really what happens? <laughs> <laughs> what were you expecting? I don't know. We just went to Jimmy Kimmel two weeks ago and it was a little different. <laughs> No, and then, and what was, what was that monologue experience like? Dry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is really it. It's very much a sort of find your own yeah. adventure at the moment. 
<laughs> moist, moist monologues. Yeah, that's what we've got. We, we are looking for <laughs> moist monologues. <laughs> I would say that's what we've got. I think we are the most moist... Most moist mono. ..monologue in late night. Yeah. That's what we want to give you before you go to bed. We want to give you... <laughs> want to give you a moist wipe. Yep. yep. We'll, 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 we'll wipe you down and we'll just tuck you in. <laughs> well, it's that time. It's time <laughs> for the news. Last night, President Biden held a virtual summit with Chinese President Xi Jinping, marking the first summit between the two world leaders. Virtu We're calling it a virtual summit. It's a Zoom. They got on a Zoom. <laughs> they had a Zoom chat. That's what they did. This, that was it. But this is true. The meeting lasted three and a half hours. If I'm going to sit through a three and a half hour anything, Harry Styles better show up in the end credits <laughs> sequence. <laughs> In other news, according to the Washington Post today, the White House is expected to announce that President Biden will not attend the upcoming Winter Olympics in Beijing, neither will any other administration official. It's a so-called diplomatic boycott in response to the Chinese government's human rights abuses. It's a shame, because Biden was actually considered a serious medal contender for the snowboarding halfpipe. <laughs> I'm not saying he'd get gold, but he was in the mix, for sure. For sure. It's not... It's a mismatch response, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's like, you're going to continue violating human rights? Well, fine. But do not expect to see me at the bobsledding track. <laughs> if you had to compete in any Winter Olympics event, zero training, you've just got to turn up and do it, what do you go for? I, we know there's one answer here as far as, like, no training, but I, what my heart is telling me? Go on. Figure skating. Yes. <laughs> you know what I do? Skeleton Bob. Yeah. The skeleton bobsleigh. The skeleton bobsleigh. Because it's nothing. I don't believe there's any training. It's literally moving your toes. <laughs> Isn't it? You know the one I mean? Yeah. You know the one where you're like, lay down. And you literally just that. Oh, skull? <laughs> you die. There's no way. What do you mean I'd die? <laughs> How would I die? It's so dangerous. No, I, I, I don't... I'm not saying... But I'm saying it's, I think it's an easy thing to do. <laughs> Like, uh, for me, I will always find the sport that's like, oh, am I laid down? <laughs> You're just moving your feet. It's that. You, it's this. You're laid down. Core space. You, 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 no, you need core strength. I've got core strength, Guillermo, more than you think. <laughs> and it, it's there, right? So you're just like, yeah, I'm ready. Do it. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. I mean, What? Silver? Yes! <laughs> That's it! And has everybody heard about this? Snapchat has just introduced a new feature that will recommend recipes based on the food that you have lying around in your kitchen. You can use Snapchat's in-app camera to scan a food item, which the app will then recognise and recommend recipes featuring that ingredient. I like that the example of the story shows eggs. <laughs> like, oh, what do I do with this bizarre ingredient? I don't know. How do I even pronounce it? What is it? Oogs? Oogs? Is it, uh, e oogs? Yeah. The way it works is this. You take a picture of the ingredients, which links you to a suggested recipe, and then you just eat what your mum makes you for dinner because you're a teenager. <laughs> That's the news. We'll be right back with more of The Late Late Show, everybody.